。其实不管做什么都有，生，都知道去做就是了。呃，金老师，金老师，新年好。新年好。回来了。昨天晚上回来。昨天晚上。哇，这个晚上给金。昨天晚上回来，刚刚先去 Roller High Office 一趟。对啊，所以我才赶过来。你不可能说做一做什么马上就有那个，对啊，而且每一个人的，每一个人每一个人自己的那个 niche， 你要找出你自己最的强。现在你要看看你这样说吧。可以，你一年可能只放一次假，一年多五天。现在都五天。看你多少天假。多少？我也不知道。他他说他三四放假。没有，没有。他一年只放一天。那你要他还有自己家里的人，这个 system 要帮他做。所以你今天。等于说你这要你你要有这个，等于说他的做法就是要<咳>很好是，就是说我今天就是要稳扎稳打，就是这样子。啊<咳>，而且你要花很多时间精神下去才完成。而且你几乎不你不要考虑去 vacation。Investigation, property and matters affecting the property. Okay, 应该是我要讲 twelve. Eleven 没讲吗？我上次讲到 ten 而已吗？我是 finish 到 ten 吗？看 ，domain, natural hazard, environmental, booklet, withholding tax, Megan's law 有。我记得 notice regarding gas and OK， 我讲过 condominium。OK， 对对对 ，eleven 没有，对 condition of property。OK， <coughs> paragraph eleven。OK， paragraph eleven。So many people they just they forget about this paragraph. They still repeating on the uh, um, the counter offer. Still say the property is so as is. You're only repeating, right here. Paragraph 11, condition property unless otherwise agreed in writing. 
one. The property is sold as is in its present physical condition as the date of acceptance, and B, subject to the buyer's investigation right. Two, the property, including pool, spa, landscape, and ground, is to be uh, maintained in substantially the same condition as on the date of acceptance. And three, all debris and personal property not included in the sales shall be removed by close of escrow. So first of all, we know what you see is what you get as present access condition, but doesn't mean that access condition is no repair. No, I still can request a repair. Access means three bedrooms is three bedrooms. Two baths is two baths. It will not change it. Okay, two car garage won't come out with three car garage. As this is what you see, what you get. That is, you have to find out. That's why don't assume and don't trust seller or listing agent telling, yeah, it has a permit, show me. Okay, even they show you. Are you still double check with the city or county? Yes, because sometimes we don't understand that permit did not have a seal. What are you, what's that supposed to You presented, but did not approve. You thought that's a blueprint. Yeah, county did submit mm -hmm. it. But did you ever get the seal, final approval? No. So you still need to double check with the city or county. Planning department. I don't trust seller or listing agent. I will still double check. Mm -hmm. Or anything you have any doubt. They cannot provide. Okay, I'll check on it. Even with the permit, but how come the permit may be different then assess a record, how come? Why? Assess a record means property tax, right? But how come the, 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 uh, the addition has a permit? Why difference? Why? And you better resolve it with, within the escrow because city or county does not communicate to assessor department. As a seller, you need to bring all the document to the assessor. And if that addition is 10 years ago, what's the difference on the property tax? Who gotta pay? Who's gonna pay? If you close the escrow, good luck, buyer. It's your problem. Are you gonna cover for the previous seller for 10 years differences on the property tax plus penalty and interest? Are you, that's why we got to deal with it. Every time you check the real list, if any discrepancy difference than the city, county record, you bring those records to assessor. Assessor, oh, first time we see those permits. Aha. Then we, you bring that to the seller, say, you got to pay. This is difference because seller is liable for difference on the property tax because, oh, shit, 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 shit. <clears throat> Because if you don't resolve that property tax, it's gonna be a trouble for buyer. The buyer have to after the previous seller. When it's close of escrow, everything is tough. If the seller, they go back to foreign country. Good luck. If then, buyer, if you really wanna update it with a square footage later on when you wanna sell it, then you better pay. Otherwise, it's gonna to be tough. How, how can you get the record straight? That's a problem. And not even thinking about it, if unpermitted area, then even the uh, finance has a trouble. <clears throat> Some of a, uh, you know, area like uh, within the uh, uh, Chinese community, Hispanic community, we, they, you know, do a lot of addition without permit. Then when you sell it or when you buy it, it's a buyer's due diligence. Listing agent is not responsible to provide you all the information. They're not responsible. Sell is no guarantee. Why? <clears throat> Let me show you very quick. When somebody challenged me on a square footage, this is the last page, buyer's inspection advisory, right? Okay, I just jump ahead of time right here. What's the square footage here? 3B and boundary, square footage, room, dimension, lot size, age improvement, and the boundary. Any numerical statement regarding this item and approximation only and has not been verified by, well, who? 
seller and cannot verify by brokers. So that means listing agent, I'm not re responsible for all the square footage. Who is responsible? Buyer. But if the buyer rely on who? Buyer's agent. That's a buyer's agent due diligence. Those are need to check on it. Because if you don't want your buyer sue you afterward for this. Doesn't, and then certainly, you know, fence, hedges, wall, retaining wall, and other barrier uh, market do not necessarily identify true property boundary. Can you see the boundary? If you really, some people are really concerned. If encroachment, you know, sometimes if the sellers already know the encroachment, they will tell you, neighbor using my property partial on how many square footage, how much on square footage. Then if you agree, do you buy it? If you don't, then let me, you get a challenge to the neighbor. If the seller know, but how many seller really does know? No, really. Sometimes if they go, they got encroachment on the fence, eh, they get a, a one foot <laughs> or two feet crossover. You don't know because you, you cannot count. Okay, sometimes the curve do have a mark and that's a boundary line. But where's a boundary doesn't mean every time it's straight. Some of the older property, the boundary can be like this, make a little uh, square, then go this way. <laughs> or this, go this. I saw that, I said, oh, okay, you see the plat map. But you gotta have to double check with the plat map too. So when you see, really see the boundary right, right on the curve, if they do have a nail, then you can you know, look at a plat map as well. But if the buyer do have a concern, you don't wanna be the surveyor. Are you gonna be, showing the buyer on this property, you know, all the, what you got, the plat map, how to do the calculation. No, I won't. I only email you. I can email you mm. and that's it. If you can accept it, fine. If you cannot accept it, you hire someone to do the, the uh, survey for the boundary. <clears throat> Especially huge property acres, those land. Then you gotta have to know your boundary because they got no fence. <laughs> But usually within the urban city, you know, and pretty much, you know, they're pretty accurate. <clears throat> so remember this, because if that's why somebody challenged you a square footage, hey, so it's not responsible. So do the listing broker. Actually, they didn't really say listing broker. It's because they're kind of protecting the buyer's broker too. <laughs> That's why they say brokers. And those are who should be, you know, uh, verified. This is a buyer's inspection advisory. That's why when we look at the paragraph 11 condition and why we have to look at this, because this is more detailed. What is a buyer they should do? When you go to the county or tax assessor, don't go by yourself. You drag your buyer, go with you. You don't want to pass on the message from those official, you know, for the county or the uh, city uh, planning department personnel. You bring it over to them. Even if I don't speak English, fine. You can be kind of do the translator, but you got to pass it on their mouth to their ear directly. Even they don't understand English. That's okay. You are nice stand right next to it. Do the translation. So at least directly the information to your buyer, not pass it on to your ear and you explain the mouth over the phone. But unless it's like, if the buyer's in a foreign country, there's not much you can do. You know, I try to minimize those issues. But if the, uh, if the situation like that, if the buyer's here, bring the buyers over, okay? To the planning city, uh, planning department. <clears throat> Okay, let's go back to paragraph 11. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> then to the subject to the buyer's investigation, right. See that? So that's why we talk about a, the seller inspection advisory. It's actually look at 11B, that's the same thing. And Three, the property including pool, spot, landscape, and ground, it is maintained substantially in the same condition. 
So basically, if the pool, when you see, when you open escrow, pool is kind of looks like a pool. When it close of escrow, it cannot be looks like a pond. <laughs> it's not like, oh, okay, the house is escrow, so I don't have to clean the pool. No, you got to maintain the pool until close of escrow. You got to maintain your lawn. Hire the gardener, continue. And remove all the debris, all the leaves, everything. Continue to do the service until close of escrow. So it's not open escrow, you stop all the service. No. That's the paragraph 11 say, as is condition. So don't mess up when the as is condition, don't think about the repair. No, it's not equal. Some people say, yeah, um, the uh, uh, if the something is already broken or something already um, it's not functionable, say like dishwasher, it's not function. And that's as is. Well, not to me. That's because that's a an operational items, right? So, I, for example, if the only thing. Um, we may consider, say, if we see the outlets, we got those uh, older house with two prong. With the one, what well, we currently, what well, we have a three prong with the ground, okay? Those are the difference. If you do not touch it, you keep the two, uh, the two prong in the house, and I cannot ask the seller to upgrade it because that's as is. You gotta have to know how to play with it. But if some of a smart seller, they replace it, the outlet only with a three prong, but the wire still no ground. Ha ha, gotcha. The seller said, wait a minute, can I change back to two prong? Too late. If you don't touch it, I can after you. Because that's a grandfather permit. Grandfather law, just like uh, if you do the inspection, you go to see on the uh, uh, race foundation property. Can you, after the seller, say, oh, you have to uh, meet the current building code to get the earthquake support because the old uh, building code is any house before 1960 is the, the race foundation stud is 12 feet apart. But the new building code, if it's still race foundation, or if you want to build a race foundation, it's only six feet apart. So you got better support. Those are the assets condition. You, you could, that's, that's why we hired an inspector and tell the seller, say, this is a new building code. Spire can request the seller to upgrade. Can seller refuse it? Yeah. <laughs> they can refuse it. Well, that's the assets. And if you want to upgrade it, you do an upgrade yourself. Fire. And if you want to upgrade the outlet, you upgrade yourself. But if the sellers don't really do the, uh, they, they, they try to hide it. If they replace uh, the outlet for three prong without the crown, then I can after them because that's a safety issue. You do just the cheapest part upgrade. Because outlet, how much cost for the outlet? It's cheap. But how much it cost to upgrade for the, uh, to ground it? That's expensive. If you want to ground at each outlet or wire the, the, the um, ground, you know, to the uh, main panel, it can be easily three to four thousand dollars. Oh, everything because they all connected. If you do the, the main panel, upgrade it. You, if you see the, if the main panel, did they upgrade it? You see one of a copper wire go all the way to what? Ground or they connect to a steel, you know, steel bar, and they connect it like this, the ground. Or they have a copper pipe connected to the, a copper, uh, for the pipe or drainage. That's considered ground. But if you main panel have nothing from outside, you know it's not really grounded. It's an older panel, if like those are 100 amp. Uh, some of a uh, San Marino house, you can still see a million dollar house. You know what's the amperage, you know, on the, the panel, 60. 60, put it this way, 60 amp. If you turn on everything, boom, make a shortage. <laughs> Air conditioning, all the lights, then you plug in your hair dryer, boom. <laughs> 60 amp is not enough, but sometimes they did not, up, did not upgrade it. 
Uh huh. Three to four thousand dollar. If you the, the okay, if you want to replace the uh, the electrical panel, okay. I know some of his old one. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Additional room, but they're not grounded in the main house. Okay, same thing. You have to ground it. But if you do, if you do ground it, okay, certainly that's fine. But if you do not, make sure if if they too, if the outlet is still too prone. Okay, then I can really after them because it's part of assets. I mean, I can ask for the seller to upgrade it. Can seller re deny it? Yeah. But if somebody only replaced the outlet to three prong, but how come you can find out? What, when we see the inspection report, say open ground. What's that mean, open ground? No ground. So that's, that, that, that's why I say smart seller. <laughs> when I plug it in, open ground. I even have a test in my car too. <laughs> I can test it. If you see the open ground, that means no ground. Then I cannot tell the, the seller. So then I put the old, uh, old uh, outlet back. No, too late. I gotta tell you to do the uh, grounding because that's a safety issue. Because you do partially upgrade, you did not complete. That's an incomplete upgrade, and that may, can be cause fire. I always use fire. To kind of scare seller, and so did the listing agent. Are you going to be responsible if the buyer happened with burning the house because your outlet do it halfway, or you credit me two, three thousand, or maybe four thousand dollars, then you off the hook. <laughs> they they come to me as this condition no repair, and I still get four thousand credit. Why? Yeah, safety issue. You gotta know how to scare seller. Yeah. You gotta have to know how to scare the seller. So do the listing agent. Then I cannot really mm -hmm. ask them. I can only tell the seller to upgrade them, but I cannot tell the seller to replace them because safety issue. Because that's a grandfather's law, just like the one of the earthquake uh, foundation for the race foundation support. So sometimes if you see those house with two prong, don't do anything. If you if you're the listing agent, don't suggest a seller do anything. They can do all the upgrade. They can do all the remodeling. You ask a seller if you really want to touch those uh, outlet to three prong, you better do all the way. Otherwise, somebody can after you, like the buyer's agent, like me. <laughs> if you're the listing agent, because it's not cheap to to ground it. And if the amperage is not enough, like 60 amp, 80 amp, 100 amp, those are if you want to upgrade the new electrical panel, that's easily another three thousand dollars. Well, certainly when you upgrade the panel, um, 200. That's usually I would recommend to upgrade the 200 amp, so you can have all all kinds of like a, a conventional oven, you know, running a 220 electrical. Like my house, I'm running 220 from a, uh, a dryer, you know, for the uh, laundry dryer. Um, <clears throat> so, I mean, those are, and even I can have a, a, a spa, okay? Those are, you have to all, all rewire it and put the, the other, you know, wiring directly to the electrical panel. But if you only got 100 amp, definitely, you cannot have those stuff installed. And I know even the new builder, they don't even reinstall the 200 amp either. If you look at a brand new house, townhouse, probably 150. They try to save some money. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> they certainly try to save some money. But if you sometimes, if you look at those houses in 1980 something, they usually install a 200 amp. Actually better than the one on the, uh, a brand new house. So those are, you know, the, uh, and another thing is that if you see those uh, uh, wire above the roof, the electrical wire go to the electrical pole, not the underground one. So those are, if somebody do the upgrade, for example, they do the upgrade, only electrical panel, but they forgot to raise. Okay, that means it's like, you have to know the new code and the old building code. 
you raise the 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 uh, above from the electrical panel. You go above the roof. It has to be three feet above the roof. The old coal is only one foot. <laughs> you see those arms? They come up, you know, with the three wire connect to the electrical hole. Okay. The old one is only one foot. The new one is three foot. So when you do the upgrade, you got to have to do all the way. And that's easily, that is another 500 bucks. <laughs> So that's why you gotta have to really, really recommend the uh, a buyer do the inspection. Lately, I learned something new is, do you know how much cost to remove the asbestos pipe? But where's those asbestos pipe coming from? The previous heater, the old wall mount furnace heater and uh, in, in between the attic, they usually use a asbestos pipe to prevent the heat. But with, now we all know that asbestos could be cause cancer. Can anybody remove the asbestos pipe? The answer is no. Only the licensed specialist, asbestos licensed specialist, they can remove, and that's very expensive. $1,000 per pipe. <laughs> if you got two wall mount heater, that's easily two thousand dollars. <laughs> As is condition. Well, can you ask a seller to remove? Yeah, you could. Safety. <laughs> That's why you gotta have to know where and when and how to attack seller, so that the listing agent. And that's part of a negotiation game. That's why it's not just a price. When you do the uh, the uh, uh, request for repair, that's a other negotiation as well. So that's why, you know, lots of, you, it's really easy to open the door. Any agent can open the door, but it takes the experienced agent to go through with the buyer. That's why I try to share, um, you, share with you guys, you know, all the information, okay? When you facing those situations, you know what to deal with them. And don't be afraid to deal with them. Because somebody can scare you. I have, you know, working a 30 years experience. You know, somebody hammered you. I said, well, okay. Then how many, how many houses you sell in 30 years? That's what I ask him. <laughs> one, once a, or one house a year? <laughs> That's a 30 years too. Or how long did you really practice? You can have a license for 30 years, but how long did you practice? A lot of them. In California, more than 50% of the uh, uh, licensee is not practice. Yeah, we're proud to be the, those, the top 40-some 40, 40 percent. We do practice. They just get the license and sitting there. So when you get the license, you know, on a real estate license, no big deal. You got nothing. I can tell you that. Listen, don't, don't, don't think you got everything. No, you know everything. No. You got nothing. The books didn't tell you this, okay? Those are, you gotta have to learn from the mistake. Learn from the, uh, those are senior, you know, real estate agent and so do, you know, you gotta have to attend like real estate management. Sometimes you have to even att uh, attending those attorney training because they will tell you what's a lawsuit <laughs> and try to avoid it. Because as I tell you, we have no way to avoid a lawsuit. One third of the, our chance to get it in our career. Uh, 11A, seller should within the time specified in paragraph 14A, this is just reminding you, that's contingency period, disclose no material fact and effect affecting the property, including no insurance claim within the past five years and make any and all other disclosure required by law. So you gotta ask the seller, when you took the listing, you start asking those questions already, not just took the listing. You gotta have to ask them say, okay, all the disclosure, those information, you gotta get at least, did anybody pass away inside the house on the, you know, for the past three years, or even, or unnatural death, anything you know about this house. 
because the natural death is three years. Unnatural death is forever. You need to disclose. Now, if you don't practice, you don't know. All you, all you think is three years. Suicide, homicide, okay? Those are forever. You have to disclose. Otherwise, you know, people, they can find it, you know, through the, the uh, police department anyway. Those are as a record. And the, uh, um, the insurance claim, the past five years, because anything, the, if you claim insurance, any theft, water damage, fire damage, within five years, you disclose. I had the uh, seller, they disclosed the fire damage, they claim on that, even though it was only seven, eight years ago. They still disclose it, why? They try to off the hook. If they disclose it, you're still buying it, and then it become buyer's responsible. You are willing to buy whatever the condition or the history of the house. Because sometimes, you know, uh, it has caused a fire, and um, insurance agent may not reinsure some of a <laughs> insurance company. I mean, what do you do? Right? Then you gotta have the buyer to uh, insure someone else. Just like, you know, but you, the uh, buyer cannot really get a discount if they separate the house, insurance, and so to do a vehicle. Then who gonna pay those uh, uh, increase, those differences? That's another negotiation I did before. <laughs> because insurance differences, what I can tell you, the auto club, they are not going to insure if the house have any claim. I can tell you that right now. Water damage, fire damage. But if your buyer insists to do the auto club on their vehicle, but their house cannot get insured by auto club, then what do you do? They cannot get the uh, you know discount, sometimes at least 10%. Then that's a part of a negotiation. You ask the seller, whose fault is that? Not buyer. So what a, you know, the situation before I end up, you know, the house go insured through State Farm and their car still in auto club and ask $3,000 compensation from seller. Seller even got so pissed, but still pay. <laughs> yeah. Because I gotta have to do something. Otherwise, buyer's gonna cancel. Are you gonna let the buyer cancel? No way. I, 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 I didn't, that if the if buyer canceled, I work for nothing. I gotta start over again. So if the money can, monetary, that's what we call it, the monetary can be resolved, use it. You talk to the seller. Well, if the buyer, you know, if you don't give them something, and they're gonna cancel. Even, I'm almost, almost willing to credit something to the, my buyer. Close the deal from my commission, okay? That's why I don't, I don't credit anything ahead of time because I don't know what's down in the escrow. <sighs> Request to repair, insurance, anything could happen. Then if the seller's not agree, seller is so tough, then are you gonna cancel or not? Are you gonna encourage your buyer to cancel? Not really. I gotta have to start over. If I can, using a thousand, two thousand dollars to smooth everything out, I will use it. But I'm pretty lucky. Seller or agree to pay three thousand dollars, so I don't have to come out with anything in my pocket. <laughs> and I, I, I ask the buyer, "What can you? You ask the, your buyer. Okay, I agree with you. You can cancel. But if, if I can get you some money to compensate the differences, what's your allowance? What's your limit? You ask the buyer, what's your allowance? Then I can fight for you from seller. So the buyer say three grand." Oh, it's not cheap. Even if I want to really lose the three grand or something like that, yeah. So, lucky, you know, the seller took it. Yeah. So I don't have to come out with my own pocket. And I can be the hero in front of my buyer, right? <laughs> Why not? If you don't ask, you don't get it. Okay, don't be afraid to ask for the credit if you need to. Yeah. Yeah. Anything. But but you gotta have to be reasonable. 
you have to be reasonable. I mean, if you, for example, I see those are repaired, they're coming out with a $12,000 or $13,000 repair. Wait a minute. You better itemize it. How, what, what kinds of repair cost that much? Foundation? Well, it's a foundation, yes. But minor repair, come on, itemize it. If you really want to ask those repair, you better have a support, like what? Estimating. For example, if electrical, for example. Okay. You have what? Electricians estimate. You better have an estimate attached with your request for repair. Not just a general inspection report. Because we are not an expert. Even you know how much, roughly. I don't play hero. I ask the buyer, why don't we just hire the electrician? You know, do the estimate. Then we ask the seller, what the paper look? Yeah. Black and white. Yeah, that's a part of negotiation. You gotta have a black and white. So B, buyer has a right to conduct buyer investigation of a property and as specified in paragraph 14B, based upon information discovered in those investigation. One, cancel this agreement. That means purchase agreement. If you want to cancel the escrow right here. Or two, request the seller make repairs or take other action. So beside the repair, what are, what's the other action? Credit or reduce the price. Those are the other action you can take. And I will cover that when it's, we go through the request for repair and also the seller responding request for repair. C, the buyer is strongly advised to conduct investigation of an entire property in order to determine its present condition. Seller may not be aware of all defect affecting the property or other factor that buyers consider important. Property improvement may not be built according to code in compliance with the current law or have had permit issue. So why the use of ball print? The advice for the investigation. Okay, we all know that, general inspection. But after the re report coming out, what is telling you? The seller may not be aware of all defect affecting. For example, if the seller never used a dishwasher, do they know it's uh, broken or not? Is it as this condition? Well, <laughs> so that's why the buyer you start asking a seller, you do the repair or replace another dishwasher. <clears throat> and also, if you look at the uh, uh, Improvement may not be built according to the code. So that means if somebody replaced a three-prong outlet, that's a part of improvement, right? But incomplete. That's not according to the code. Can you ask for the repair? Yeah. That's not part of access because you did not follow the code. Just like you do the addition without the permit. That's illegal, right? Those are, you'd be aware of it. Because I'm, I have a listing before, we only have a, a illegal attic, then we got a citation from seller. No, 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 from city. Oh, county, county actually has it high, so. Red tag, and the front door. And the seller said, what's this? I said, uh-oh, citation. Who reported? Obviously, it's a buyer's agent. Are you going to be a man? No. I'm glad. Why? I got something. I told you. <laughs> I told you before. When I took the listing, this part is unpermitted. You told me. When we show the property, we may have a risk. Bang. 
somebody reported because somebody someone wanted me to check on it. So I, I do appreciate that buyer's agent helping me. So seller, if somebody submit the offer, so we have to disclose and either seller complete it or we let the buyer have the promissory note with this county or city. 90 days, you gotta have to resolve the issue. Either remove it, all the uh, uh, remodeling inside of the attic area or get a permit. You go either way. So those are, you know, you gotta have to, you know, why they be a bold print. You gotta explain to the buyer, that's your right. You better do it. Then if outside of escrow, when the escrow close, it's become your buyers, new owners responsible because you agree to buy it. And don't blame seller later on and don't blame me. <laughs> as a buyer's agent, don't blame me either. You agree. That's a ball print, black ball print. Yeah. Oh, well, I can hear somebody. You know, here is the the, the phone ring. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> <clears throat> Number twelve: buyer's investigation property and matter affecting the property. Okay, put it this way: if the buyer they want to uh, do all kinds of inspection, don't stop them. All right. If they want to do the more inspection, fine. Don't stop them. As a buyer's agent, you don't really volunteer. I can kind of tell them, you have a right to do all kinds of inspection, but every inspection buyer need to pay, okay? But I will not really fully encourage, the general inspection, yes, I will fully encourage. After that, it's up to them. But at least the bottom line, don't stop your buyer do the inspection. If they want to do the square footage inspection, fine. If they want to do the uh, uh, the mold inspection, fine. Uh, foundation or structure, fine. They pay. Did you care? No. Because the more they inspect it, the last liability, you, as a buyer's agent. Why not? If they don't, they don't like it, cancel, fine. Don't feel bad because when you got something in hand that you have a black and white, you can ask the seller, hey, this is your house. Either you credit or you reduce the price because I do have a black and white. We did an inspection. But are you going to give a copy of the, those report to the seller? Yes, absolutely. You don't need to hide from seller. Don't get cheap. <laughs> People over there, oh, buyer pay for a white seller. You know, have to get a copy. You'll, you'll find out. <laughs> Seller do have a right to get a copy. <clears throat> and we'll continue. Here is a contingency of this agreement as specified in the paragraph 14B with the time specified in paragraph 14B. Buyer should have the right at buyer's expense unless otherwise agree conduct inspection. Invest in inspection, investigation, test, survey, and other study. Buyer investigations include, but not limited to. So here we already call, most likely it's a buyer's expense though. You know, a lot of buyers, you know, they, they usually don't want to spend that much money, <laughs> do all kinds of stuff. But if you got, if you got a million dollars property or a million dollars income property, then why not? They already spend a millions and millions of dollars. How much compared to the inspection? That's a little. But when you buy like a townhouse, two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars, yeah, some people doesn't really even do the general inspection either. But if they do not do any inspection, remember have them sign a waiver. So I do encourage you deny, I'm off the hook. Buyer, you sign it, you waive it. 
don't sue me after, you know, close of escrow. You blame on them. Oh, how come, you know, you don't enforce me to uh, do the inspection? Are you three years old, kid? <laughs> Can I enforce you to do something? You sign a waiver. <laughs> you give up your own right. Yeah. <clears throat> One, a general and physical inspection. That's usually, I would suggest, almost must. Number two, an inspection specified for wood destroyed pests and organism. That's your termite. Any inspection for wood destroyed pests and organism uh, <clears throat> shall be prepared by Registered Structure Pest Control Company. And shall cover the main building and attached structure. May cover detached structure shall not include water test of shower pane or upper level unit unless owner of a property below the shower consent. Shall not include roof coverage. And if the property is a unit in the condominium and other owners of property, no, a common interest subdivision, the inspection shall include only the separate interest in any exclusive use area being transferred and shall not include common area and shall include a report. Show the uh, finding of the company which shall uh, separate it into the section for evidence, infestation, and infection, section one for conditioning likely to lead infestation or infection, section two. So right here, you can see that <clears throat> structure if the condominium, you cannot really see it anyway, because it's all the units. So do the roofing, if you know somebody, if it's leaking, just like you know the contractor called me before the training, and said, James, you better come over here, we'll do the remodeling, but we, we know it's the, the, the leaking in the garage, but from upstairs units. Okay, then we have to talk to the neighbors. Who's gonna pay for that? Neighbors. Even if we wanna pay for it, but at least we have to tell them and say, you know, we're gonna, are we gonna fix it or not? Yeah. And the uh, common area, definitely, because the common area be belong to the uh, HOA. It's not belong to that particular unit. You don't inspect it anyway. But if you do it like a termite, uh, you can only uh, usually, but uh, don't assume, okay? Never assume the HOA will cover termite. Some of the HOA do not cover termite, okay? So you better ask the homeowner association, get the phone number from the uh, listing agent if you do need to find out. And I know when we doing the request for repair and uh, uh, we ask the seller to pay for the termite and the listing agent, they thought, and listing agent, they call. I know the listing agent, they call the HOA. HOA, they say, yeah, we covered a termite. Aha. Uh -huh. But on my part, termite mean is treatment and repair. But HOA, they verify with the HOA. HOA only promised them to the HOA standard is only treatment. No repair, wood repair. Then I gotta ask the listing agent and say, look, here's a contract. That, that, it's already close of escrow. It's happened in Rowan Heights. Already close of escrow. Seller, you need to pay for the wood repair. Uh... <laughs> yeah, and that's not cheap either for the wood repair because they had it since 1960 until now. 50 years, what's a wood repair? Easily two grand, <laughs> just a patio area. You know, woods outside, you know, uh, with shingle. Yeah. The uh, HOA, they promised do the treatment, but actually because um, HOA, they just took over that uh, the community. They thought, they, they see, the issue is everybody assumed. Even HOA personnel assumed their, HOA guideline, they have the uh, uh, um, termite cover. But after re HOA reading their, their, their whole community guideline, uh oh, their president did not pass the uh, uh, coverage for the termite. So HOA only promised the seller. So HOA just do the treatment, then seller do the wool repair. 
because my contract saying you got to have to cover the section one treatment and repair. That's considered completion. So the, the completion de depends on who is understanding. So I don't want to make any argument or mistake. So that's why when I do that uh, on the second page on my purchase agreement, I always put the why? Termine, treatment, and repair, completion. And I put the princess in section one with one year warranty. Then, hey, I cover pretty much everything. Then don't give me a run around later on. <laughs> yeah. Listing agent, seller, or HOA. You guys have to deal with it. I don't care who repair it. <laughs> That is a really good question. I know that request for repair, they do have a section one check mark. But I know your purchase agreement, you already ask a seller to uh, do the repair, but RR, you forgot to check the section one. No, it's not gray area. Technically, I can, if I'm the uh, listing agent, you pay. <laughs> Why? Because the RR is more like a did supersede the purchase agreement. You're right. Who forgot to make that mark? Ha! Buyer's agent, right? Don't blame buyer for get over overlook on that. Buyer's agent, if so, seller agent. Okay, not seller agent. Buyer's agent, selling agent. Put it this way: If you forgot to mark the RR on a request for repair, you you guys probably haven't get the copy yet. But anyway. Uh, later on, I'll give you a copy. I will repeat that again. Um, if the RR, you forgot to mark the section one part, good luck. If I'm the listing agent, I'm going to argue with you. You supersede. I don't have to pay for it. If I, if, if, okay, I can be a nice guy. So that's why don't piss off the listing agent. If you piss off the listing agent, boy, you have a hard road to you know, for the, the transaction, okay? You, you, you just see it, okay? I can get you. I can say, oh, um, I, can, I can slip through, okay? If Danny is like, ah, oh, no problem, you forgot it. I'll, I'll still do it, yeah. <laughs> but somebody pissed on me, hey, hey, you super see. <laughs> it is though. I will tell you, say, hey, Danny, you forgot the check mark. Go ahead, send me another one with the check mark before I present it to the seller. So that's why, you know, don't piss off the listing agent, all right? <laughs> so I, if I'm the buyer's agent, be careful everything, what you put it on, okay? Because, uh, and so do the listing agent. You have to check your contract or any paperwork, come to offer, request for repair. Usually I look at three times. I'm afraid to, you know, overlook. Yeah, not just you. So do I. And I highlight it for those who are uh, anything I look at it. Okay? You don't have to highlight it. Those are you won't have to do any changes anyway. But anything you do, the check mark area or the field in area, be careful. Read three times. But if there's any concern from the seller, if they have any question, then you gotta know which paragraph they're talking about. You highlight it to show seller. Buyer has a right to do this and that, okay? Don't piss on the buyer because this is their right. Otherwise, you don't sell it. You can deny. That's why I don't suggest you put as, uh, the counter offer put as is condition with no repair, no termite completion. Can you do that? Yeah, you could. And the counter offer, but if you do that, you may scare the buyers away. <laughs> Some of the buyers they got so pissed, boy, this seller's got, you know, they got an attitude, huh? Okay, fine, don't buy it. We'll find other property. Wait until they send us a request for repair. Then you deny. You can reject. You can refuse. Why you have to re refuse the counter offer to begin with? You want to play the hero, you know, in front of the seller? Don't do that.
just that's why I mentioned to you, we do have a, a our coworker learn from the hard way, just like that. So the buyer said, forget it. My buyer is not going to touch it now. That when I got to sign a counter because the counter offer, you say it. No repair, no termite completion. So my buyer decided not to go for it, continue. Yeah, it could happen. It just killed the deal. Yes, I will not push the buyer to give me the termite. Yeah. As a seller responsible, if you delay to give me anything, okay? So it's actually who's responsible when it's for 17 days. That's why I'm telling you, when before open escrow, listing agents like a tiger, like a lion, when it's open escrow, listing agent become cat. Within 17 days, cat. Because you should be asking about, did you receive the disclosure statement? Did you receive my termite inspection report? And when you can return all the disclosure statement back to me? Oh, oh, yeah. And is how the inspection doing? Are you going to request for repair? When are you going to send it? You better deal with that. Okay? Buyer's agent? 17 days. Uh, it's my show. <laughs> it's, that's what we call role play, right? Back and forth, back and forth. <clears throat> so it's okay. You know, before the open escrow, I'm so nice to listing agent. But when's open escrow? It's my show. <laughs> It will be your turn after open escrow, okay? So don't argue with the listing agent before open escrow. Because some of, I, I do have that. The, uh, the issue is the listing agent, that's what I heard from listing agent. Why I'm choosing you is because one of a lunatic, buyer's agent, they argue with me this and that, and even tell you I got 30, 30 years experience. Uh-oh, your history. I don't care how, how good of your offer is. Listing agent will persuade the seller, don't take that offer. Yeah, even that offer is higher price than I do. And don't take that offer because they were foreseeing the trouble. They may not close it, okay? If the listing agent is hard to deal with it, then I will same thing. I will tell the seller, you could take the risk, but you also have a highly risk. They will cancel. It's a trouble. They can foresee that. You know, um, even some of a lender or a um, buyer's agent, you know what they did? They give you a high ball price, not low ball price now, okay? The new game they are playing, they play the high ball price. Open escrow, they, they start renegotiating the price. When the price of value is not match, the purchase price. Yeah, that's a new game. And so the listing agent, they say, oh, you want to pay this much? Fine. You, rem you remove your appraisal contingency, especially above, you know, over asking price. Remember that as a listing agent. You tell the buyer, remove the appraisal contingency. Then you know who's a serious, who's not. And the uh, uh, number three, inspection for lead-based paint and other lead-based paint hazard. If the uh, uh, buyer do concern, I never had a buyer inspect the lead-based paint before. So if you tell me how to inspect it, I don't know either. Check them online. <laughs> That's a Google search. Okay. Even for my 17 years experience, nobody <laughs> check out the lead-based paint. And how do I check it? I don't know either. <laughs> but if this uh, buyer want to do that, I mean, you don't want to stop them. Oh, no, you don't need to check it. Uh, well, as a buyer's agent, you shouldn't say that. Yeah, because that's the buyer's right. Uh, number four, <clears throat> satisfy buyer as to any matter specified in the attached buyer's inspection advisory. Oh, 
See, that's what I just showed you, the virus inspection advisory. If you got any more detail, yes, you can get on the virus inspection advisory on that. Yeah. Okay, so uh, number four, about number five, review the registered sex offender database. That's if you, that's Megan's law. Okay, we, we talked about that before. You know, on the paragraph 10. Is that 10? No. Oh, no. Uh, right here. 10, yeah. 10 D. Megan's Law Database. I don't want to really want to make a big issue out of it, but it's there. It's also the buyer, they can review their database inspection. Database uh, for the sex offender database. And number. Five, six. Oh, they know, and number six, confirm the insurability of a buyer's uh, and the property, including the availability and cost of flood and fire insurance. We don't really have a flood here, but fire insurance, you gotta have to find out what's the cost. Because don't wait until the last minute to call the insurance agent. Because sometimes if they have to go through the, the last resort, the fire insurance, California Fair Plan, that's a California state insurance. And lately, they are a whole lot faster. It used to be they take about two weeks. Now it can be taking as soon as two business days to give you a quote. Because you have to get the quote first before the insurance agent, they can continue to issue the policy behalf of the, on behalf of a, the state you know, for the California Fair Plan. So you don't wait until the right before close of escrow. Then you're assuming the house is insurable. Never assume. And uh, especially older property, anything like 1960s before 70, never assume. Because they got a lot of things you need to take care of it now. You need to do the upgrade. And actually better taking care of it within uh, escrow because you gotta have to, especially during the contingency period that you can ask a seller to do the upgrade or update for the uh, uh, fire or anything issue on the house. Number seven, review and seek a proof of lease and that may need to assume by the buyer without seller's prior written consent, buyer should need, neither make nor cause to be made. Um, in basive or destructive buyer's investigation except for my, uh, minimal invasive testing required to prepare a pest control report, an inspection by any government building or zoning inspection or government employee unless required by law. The, uh, um, we talk about like a pest control, if the section two, we all know if that's a reasonable doubt. When a reasonable doubt, I mean, you didn't see it visually. For example, you see the uh, uh, water stain or it's really, mold area um, with the uh, uh, soft uh, moisture, for example. Not only you see the mold, what, what I have to get a reasonable doubt is also termite. Because if the kitchen, especially underneath the sink, and they have an outside wall, on the bottom of that, if you see the mold and you touch it, it's still wet. So that means somewhere it's leaking then is it possible to have a termite you know, uh, penetration from outside the wall? Yeah, possible. Because you have a wood stud inside. So those are, you have, not only you may have to deal with the mold, you also have to deal with the uh, uh, section two. You can ask a seller to open it up, that section you know, for the drywall. If you see the termite damage, that becomes section one because it becomes visible from section two to section one. But if it's no termite, then buyer, you need to patch the wall. <laughs> if you don't, <laughs> because if you don't buy the property, you need to patch a wall for seller because you insist to open the wall to double check and see if it has any termite. Okay. So that's, you know, pretty clear to say that. So any question? Pretty clear? Yeah, because those are the buyer's investigation. Okay, and B, seller should make the property available for buyer investigation 
and buyer should one, as specified in paragraph 14b, complete buyer investigation, either remove the contingency or cancel the agreement. Two, give seller at no cost, complete copy of all such investigation report obtained by the buyer, which obligate should survive the termination of this agreement. So if the buyer refused to give the seller report, you know where to ask according to the purchase agreement 12B2. Seller have entitled get the no cost, a copy of such investigation report. Not just a general report, any report. Even you get a second opinion pest control report, you still need to pass it on to the seller or any surveyor or any uh, mold inspection report. C, seller should have water, gas, electricity, and all operated pilot light on for the buyer's investigation and through the date possession is made available to buyer. Used to be they didn't have this paragraph, so we argue so much, you know, especially Bangkok property, <laughs> they did not turn on. <laughs> You know, um, I would understand if they if they have a broken pipe or remove. When you see some of a Bangkok property, they don't even have a faucet, shower head, or something. If I turn it on, it flooded. I understand. That's the only situation. Maybe we can make an exception because otherwise we'll flood it in the house. Other than the standard one, you should you have to turn on everything because it happened to me before. Electricity. And water, it can be turned on in one or two days, quick, very quickly. But how about gas? What's the longest way you have before? I had it before, two weeks. Because the gas company, they have to come out. It's not like electricity, boom, you turn on. <laughs> water, you can do it, you know, outside, anytime, right? <laughs> gas. Company people, they, they are not just turn on the gas. They have to come inside to check your water heater, check your furnace, check your stove. There's no gas leak. Every time. So they cannot turn on unless someone is home, is there, especially vacant property. You got to have somebody wait there for three, four hours. Who knows when they're going to show up? They will give you the time frame. And when I wait for two weeks, then can I do the inspection? No. You could have an inspector do the inspection, but I cannot do the inspection for a stove or a furnace or water heater. Then, can someone tell me to remove the contingency? No, until I check those again, if you already have an inspection. Or I can have the inspector come out two weeks later after the gas turn on. I had those situations happen, so I removed the contingency right before I refunded the loan. Because they delay. They're delaying on everything. The gas company didn't really come out after two, three weeks later. Hey, that's about 21 days. Fine. Do I care? No. We'll continue to do whatever we have. And we do the inspection after two, three weeks later. Yeah. So those are, you know, <clears throat> you have to remember. Reminding the seller and also don't have them to just say, oh, okay, uh, since the, uh, they already do the inspection, I cut all the utility. No, no, don't do that because you still got what? Final walkthrough, right? When the final walkthrough, no utility, what happened? You gotta turn it on again, seller. Okay. Don't get cheap. Right here. You have to be doing the until uh, through the date of possession by the buyer. It has to be available. That means until close of escrow has to be available. 
And D, buyers indemnify, uh, indemnity and sellers protection for entering upon property. Buyers shall keep the property free and clear of lien. That's, you know, actually the, uh, uh, we, when we look at the title, we'll know that. And repair uh, all damage arise from the buyer investigation. Three, indemnify and hold seller harmless from all resulting liability claims, demands, and damage and the cost. And buyer shall carry and buyer shall require anyone acting on buyer's behalf to carry policy of liability uh, for the workers, compensation for other applicable insurance, defending the protecting seller from liability of any inquiry person and property um, of, um, incurring uh, during any buyer's investigation and work done on the property at the buyer's direction prior to close of escrow. Sellers advise that certain protection may be afforded seller by recording notice of non-responsibility, NNR. I'll, I'll explain that later. For buyer's investigation and work done on the property, buyer's directly, uh, direct, um, at buyer's direction, buyer's obligated, obligation under this paragraph shall survive the determination of this agreement. Basically, uh, uh, seller is no responsible. So that's why if you do have like, Inspection company get in, and if the uh, inspector fell from the uh, roof, who's responsible for that? For the medical bill, if the inspector they go on the roof, <laughs> not seller, not listing agent, buyer to who hire, right? Then. Later on, you know, I will tell you that anything refer, we cannot guarantee their job performance. But I mean, usually I would rather have the buyer to call the inspection company directly <laughs> instead of I do. Unless you know this buyer. Yeah, okay, I'll call for them. Because if they call the inspection company directly, it's their responsible. So you better hire somebody has a workers' comp, have insurance. You got to, can you check the uh, ins uh, for the inspection company insurance, yes, the company should have an inspection insurance I mean, for the insurance workers' comp insurance. You know, at least a million dollars just in case their employee pew, a damage. You know, anything that hurt when doing the inspection, that's considered workers' comp. But if the uh, they don't have insurance coverage, like one man, those are single uh, inspection inspector, especially Chinese one. If they fail from the roof, buyers, good luck. You gotta pay their medical bill. Because they can after you. Who's gonna be the workers comp buyer? <laughs> so don't get cheap. I don't care if they speak Chinese or not. I rather don't hire the Chinese inspection company or Chinese inspectors. Because I heard that before. They have big mouth. Sometimes they may ruin your purchase. <laughs> they, they, because seller, but buyer will ask the inspector, how much is going to cost this? How do I, in, in, they ask the inspector directly, but, it, but inspector, they shouldn't talk. They shouldn't advise the buyer for anything. It's not their responsibility. All their job is do the inspection and that's it. Keep their mouth shut. But how many inspectors they can keep their mouth shut? Typically Chinese inspector. That's why I don't hire a Chinese inspector at all. Even I got a lot of Chinese client. How come I, you know, can we hire the inspector? You know, they speak Chinese? Sure. But sometimes, you know what I, I want to tell them and say, are you ready to hire the inspector? They are thoroughly do the inspection or they just partially do the inspection. What do you mean partially? Chinese, they do partially. Sometimes they're so lazy. They don't even get on the attic. They don't get on the roof. They don't get underneath of a raised foundation. I know it's dirty. Yeah. But if you look at those Caucasian, they go everywhere you ask. Okay, 
especially race foundation. I know unless it's like if they inspect it, they're so size so big they can like <laughs> go underneath. That's a different story. But at least they can take the photos on each angle. You can see it. You, you, at least you try your effort. I know sometimes it's hard to crawl underneath because the entrance is so small. Yeah. And I just, you know, kind of, I remember as the, uh, forgot to tell you the, uh, uh, for the, eh, the termite, oh, termite, I say that, section two, okay. So that is the, uh, okay. For the nun, notice of non-responsibility, what's that? It's actually a form. If you do allow the uh, buyers to hire their contractor or the repairman, do the repair of the unit before close of escrow, what kinds of situation would do that? The standard sale, they won't, because basically the uh, lender, they, don't, they, they got careless, you got repair or not. But if you do have an FHA loan buyer, the FHA loan require the uh, the uh, uh, appraiser. They have to go back again to see all the repair has been done because appraiser become more like an inspector for the lender. So the buyer, if they have FHA loan, you hire the contractor before because the seller say, if the seller say, I, I deny for anything, the buyer say, but I still love the property. I'm willing to pay for the repair. Then buyer pay for the repair. That's fine. Then as a listing agent, you gotta have the buyer provide you the contractor who's gonna be, you know, do the work. And you do the notice of no responsibility, notarize it, and stick it on a window of the selling property. So at least it will notify, say it's been notar notarized. And they say, seller's not gonna be responsible for any, uh, contractor if they have the uh, uh anything happen on the house you know for the uh repair if they fail from the roof okay they, they they have to don't don't sue sellers and so do the sellers insurance they will not cover either then as a buyer buyer's agent i'm not going to cover that then who's going to do that you have to do the you know have them to to sign on the uh Notice of non responsible, non responsibility. Okay, so we'll finish all the uh, the buyer's inspection part. Clear? Any question? No? Okay. 13, title and vesting. With the time specified in paragraph 14, Buyer should be provided a current preliminary title report. The preliminary report is only an offer by the title insurance to insure or to issue a policy of a title insurance that may not contain every item affecting the title. Buyer's review of the preliminary report and any other matter which may affect titles are a contingency of this agreement. As specified in paragraph 14b, the company provide the preliminary report shall prior to issuing a preliminary report, conduct a search of the general index of all sellers except banks and other institution lender, seller properties they require through foreclosure. Um, corporation and government entity seller should within seven days after acceptance give escrow holder a completed statement of the information. So that means you, for the preliminary title, or if you wait until open escrow, you better do it quick, seven days. You're given the disclosure, everything to the uh, uh, buyers, including, you know, basically we given the, uh, the buyer natural hazard disclosure statement, preliminary title report, and all the disclosure, even including in, uh, termite inspection. Because you can have those uh, uh, stuff, you know, prepare even before close, uh, before open escrow. You can have seller fill out all the disclosure statement, have the escrow get standby ready for the natural hazard disclosure statement preliminary title report because they are not gonna cost the seller because they haven't issued a policy yet. 
it's free they run the search and if you can hire those uh, uh, in the company they can do the free inspection not exactly free inspection but they will come out for free first put it this way and if they did not find anything and if you issue the inspection uh, report okay they may charge you you know just for the inspection report if they didn't if you did not do any repair by them if they do the repair uh, later on then they will waive that inspection fee and do the completion for the seller you can prepare everything you know ahead of time if you you know just you know you don't want to delay because sometimes you may see those seven day ten days escrow seven day disclosures as you will delay actually seller you will delay the escrow if you wait until seven days yeah because i close the seven days those are escrow like what for the uh townhouse and seven business that's not seven business day it's a seven calendar day so i only i only have five working day i only you know we pay all cash with the hoa document too within seven days everything done you gotta have to be prepared sometime you know it may happen so don't wait until the last minute when you do an open when open escrow then you start rush everything because if you believe you can open escrow soon it will happen if you wait until everything at last minute you may have a long escrow you may or you may have the uh, um, you did you, you probably have the long wait before the buyers you know jump on it so if you prepare ahead of time and you start you know prepare for selling so do the seller have a mentality they are ready to sell and the listing will go fast <clears throat> b on the title is take taken in its present condition subject to all encumbrance easement covenant condition restriction right and other matters whether the record or not as the date of acceptance except for one monetary lien of recorded that's a mortgage which a seller is obligated to pay it off unless buyers assume those obligations or taking the property subject to those obligation and two those matter which seller has agreed to remove in writing some of the stuff you know uh you just have to be agree everything before close of escrow so the only thing i know we usually see the most 99 percent we see the monetary link that's the mortgage okay or any private lenders other than that if part of an issue or any policy if they are not agree or something and the seller agree to remove then you can put it in writing c within the time specifying 14a seller has the duty to disclose to buyer all matter known to seller affecting the title whether of recorded or not so seller is responsible to disclose everything even title you probably cannot check on it for example seller uh if seller uh loan the uh, seller borrowed the money from the private or their friend and given a promissory note that mean they have they that mean they can actually took the equity of the prop of the house but their friend did not record it to the county so that's why the title insurance company cannot find it recorded but the seller obligated to disclose yes because by the time when you close the escrow escrow have to pay off their friends for the personal loan because they the, their friend holding a promissory note and that can be against this property because if they record it and if they if they are not showing on a title report is it the title insurance company going to cover maybe maybe not depend on depend on your coverage don't assume the title insurance company as a full coverage <laughs> you got to pay a premium for getting the full coverage usually we only pay yeah, partial not all of them because sellers cheap <laughs> most of the sellers are cheap what's the cheapest uh, title insurance company ah man <laughs> 
So what we can get, what, what do we get? We get liability insurance, pretty, pretty much. You can say that, like our auto insurance. If you want to get a full coverage, sell to have to pay. Or sometimes if the uh, uh, buyers want to get a full coverage, I would, the, the seller only want to pay liability. You tell the buyer, should we pay the differences? That's up to you. Because title insurance company, just like any insurance company, they have a full coverage, they have a partial coverage like liability insurance. Yeah. D, at close of escrow, buyer shall receive a grantee conveying title or for stock cooperate, uh, cooperative or long-term lease an assignment of the stock cert certificate or of the seller's lease whole interest, including oil, mineral, water right, if current owned by the seller, title shall vest as des designated in buyer's supplemental escrow instruction. The manner of taking title may have significant legal and tax consult uh, consequence. Consult a property professional. Did you sell the, the you know, some of the property, they do have an oil right in La Habra Heights. Not that far. I deal with those people, I mean, deal with those property before. They have an oil right. They, they're collecting the oil company compensation. It's not much though, but seven or $800 per month. Why not? That's income. <laughs> but that's, they do have an oil right underneath. But when they sell the property, they, they also sell the oil right. Or sometimes mineral right or water right. Because I deal with those uh, uh, property with the, uh, they have to buy the water stock before you can turn on your water. Because the water company is owned by those community. It's not public. I deal with that one in the upland. I said, upland, I thought it's a city. Yes, upland, they do have a city area and so do they have a county area. The north side of those custom homes, they are a county area and they uh, have to buy in the water stock before you can turn on the water. Then when we, last time when I deal with it, it's a bank owned property, long time ago. And we have no water stock because the sellers already took it. With them. Can you took it? Yeah. Just like you're selling the restaurant, can you took your liquor license with you? Yeah. It's sold separately. It's not included. The liquor license when you're selling the, the restaurant business opportunity. Same thing. Because that can be um, valuable if the hard liquor license. Soft liquor, that's cheap. Same thing. You, you got to have to go to the water company and see whoever willing to sell the water stock. Then you have to buy, purchase first before <laughs> close of escrow. Otherwise, well, how, how can we continue? We can't. <clears throat> so if you have the situation, deal with that. You better check with the listing agent. But when you deal with the bank on property, well, you have nobody to ask. Who do you ask? Huh? Bank. They don't care. They don't know either. You have to deal with it yourself. Who do you ask? Yeah. Neighbors. Right? Neighbors will know. Yeah. Because the, uh, the, for example, that the last time I deal with the upland, not only they have to buy the water stock, then it's, we don't know, is this running by septic or storage? Well, ask the neighbor. It, uh, is your house running on a septic tank or storage? Oh, septic tank, okay. Well, so then we gotta hire what? We don't know even where's the septic is because we didn't find entrance. We have to get the ultrasound radar, bang, bounce it to the ground to find where's the septic is. That's part of inspection, isn't it? Yeah. Not general inspection. That's a different inspection. Buyer have to run it. I tell them, I say, well, it's better off to find out where the septic tank is than assuming it's broken or unusable or something. Even the house was built in 1978. Who knows? So we found it, spent about almost $500 
underground to check on where the septic tank is. Then I have to, I go to the water company to find out uh, anybody want to sell the water stock <laughs> and tell the buyer, you have to pay the water stock. Oh, how much? I say, well, you gotta have to buy a quarter share. I don't know, uh, quarter share? That's mean not one share, so yeah, quarter share for almost $10,000. That's extra cost. It, don't, don't, don't think those are cheap, no. Oh, quarter share. So that means they, they don't pay the water bill un, unless it go through their limit. If they quarter share, every month they have a, their quota. Then if you go above, then you have to pay the extra to the water company, unless you have to own more share on the water stock. If you own half share, okay, probably 20 grand, 18 grand, okay, then you can use more water because custom home, they have a huge land. You have to water, <laughs> you know, for your lawn. Yeah. I'm happy to deal with so many, all, all kinds of odd property. I said, oh, and I learned. I learned on the hard way. <laughs> Every time is different. So that's why I love my job. E, buyer should receive the Calta or Alta homeowner policy title insurance in applicable to the type of a property and buyer, if not escrow holder, shall notify buyer a title company can provide information about the availability, coverage, cost, and other title policy and endorsement if the owner's policy is not available. Buyer shall choose another policy, instruct escrow holder in writing, and shall pay any increasing cost. See that? The uh, title insurance, if you want to pay the full coverage and the seller is not agree, who's going to pay? Buyer have to pay any increased cost. You want to get more co coverage, right? Here we go. Just like our auto insurance. You want to pay the premium? You want to get higher coverage? Pay the premium. Seller can only probably cover the liability. Well, one is a short term, one is a longer term. It's a short term and long term. Yeah, I remember, I think Kelta is a short term. Yeah, and the Elta, that's a longer term. It's like, if, for example, if they have a short term, it could be, could be cheaper, like maybe within five years, they do the pre, uh, uh, transaction or uh, refinance. Because every time they refi, title insurance company have to repurchase. Then if they're short term, that's cheaper on a premium because they, they don't have to cover so much um, the coverage because the previous title insurance company, they only covered the before part. You only covered this part, uh, maybe past five years, for example, okay? But the longer term, why they cost much? Because I have to cover the whole thing, the past uh, 20 years, for example, if this house never sold in 20 years, never did the refi, they have to cover longer term at the 20 years, anything happened. So we gotta cost more for the policy. Can title insurance company deny the property? Yes, absolutely. What kinds of situation they will deny? Do you know? Yes, no history. For example, if the property in the past 30 years, uh, 30 years ago or 50 years ago, some of the property is really old and they have a gap or uh, used to be buyer and seller, they deal with that by themselves. It's for sale by owner. They want to get cheaper, okay? They don't want to pay the title insurance company. So the buyer, okay, fine. You know, we don't care. Yeah, we trust you, the title, everything. All right. Then when the buyer want to sell this property, then what happened? Uninsurable, just like your fire insurance. The property become uninsurable. When an uninsurable property, do you think the bank will fund it? The loan? No. No. You can only sell to what? Cash buyer. Suddenly, it's like unpermitted area. Those guys see you become uninsurable. So those are the situations you gotta have to know. If the uh, title insurance, that's why when it's open escrow or sometimes when you have, uh, when you get the listing, you have the escrow, get ready for the uh, title report. Why? Basically, I wanna make sure that property is insurable. I would say 99%, yes, title insurance company, they will insure the property. But sometimes if you deal that 1%, good luck. 
<laughs> yeah. Who can guarantee? It's not like a California state, they will cover, still cover fire insurance. No. Or even the title company, the smaller one, they are willing to cover. But what's a premium? If you cannot cover by the regular or the big company like Fidelity or you know American title or whatever, some of a small title company never heard about it, they're willing to insure. Pay me the premium. Yeah, you gotta have to pay more. Sometimes the seller may shop. <gasps> well, because the buyer asked me. And that, that, ins that in the uh, uh, title insurance company also have to approve by just like do you know the escrow did you ever open an escrow and lender is not approved and we have to switch an escrow company <laughs> the, the, the initial deposit have to be wired from this escrow company to uh, other escrow company too bad <laughs> Some, sometimes the in-house escrow or some of a small escrow company, they are not approved by the lender. What I'm saying, like big company, like big bank, America, I mean, uh, Bank America, Wells Fargo, Citibank, they all have a list of escrow. If you're not, what do you mean approved? Because you know, last year, is it a year, last year or a year before, all the escrow company, they got to spend about 20 some thousand dollars to upgrade their uh, software a computer software system to link with the lender. So the lender, they can check on the escrow what's, what step they are in. And if you don't pay those software to link with the lender, you're not on their list. And then they say, I'm sorry, I cannot deal with this escrow. So it's unproved that we're not gonna fund them. Even seller choose the escrow company, so what? It better be choose the one as the uh, approved one, okay? So those are, you gotta have to know the situation, not, not like what you think that easy anymore. I, I, I can tell you probably say like uh, 10 to 20% of escrow, they are not approved by the lender. So you better choose somebody, you know, some, you know with the 80% and they already upgraded with their uh, software system. Well, certainly they if, they, if they still wanna continue running the business with the escrow, most likely they have to upgrade it. So probably now maybe reduce the last 10% of escrow. It's not approved by that. Yeah. I know. It's not our concern. <laughs> no, not really. The uh, uh, title, title officer, they will look at it. When is uh, insured before? Well, we can kind of take a look. When the short term is like, you know, three years, five years ago, they did the um, um, the, uh, the refi, usually. But the, uh, it's not, it's, it's not going to cost much, only a few hundred dollar difference between the long term and short term. Yeah. No, it's not you, all you, it's not our control. It's up to, it's depend on when the seller, it's like, you know, like my house, I never, to the refi. Then when I sell my property, gotta have the Alta long term. <laughs> yeah. Because I don't believe in refi. Put it this way. <laughs> Why I don't believe in refi? It's because every time if I if, if I did the refi, I have to do the calculation. Is it worth it to do the refi? Because when you do the refinance, your mortgage, you start all over your terms. And you pay the interest again ahead of time. Well, not really though. If you didn't change a name, it's okay. But if you do, sometimes when you're adding a person or remove the person do the refi, okay, they have a possibility. But if you keep the same title, it won't. If you keep on the same person, same buyer, it just do the refi, it's okay. But who knows? Law can be changed anytime. Just like they propose, what's an owner occupy policy? Still is uh, two years out of five years, right? Without paying the capital gain. But the law may, cha may change it very soon. 
become what? Five years out of eight years. They already propose. I just don't know when it's going to start it. So owner occupier is then going to be two years out of five. Law will change. So that's why we continue to educate ourselves. So do I. I have to continue to update myself. Otherwise, you know, how, how, how can we practice a real estate? But if those are like owner occupy, a capital gain tax, it's not our issue anyway. You gotta have to ask a buyer, check with your CPA. <laughs> well, maybe a seller, you check with your CPA. It's, it's not really our responsible to telling you, but I know typical Chinese, they want you to answer everything. They say, I'm sorry, I'm not CPA. I'm not an attorney. I cannot answer you. Even I know I can't because that's my liability. If I talk to you, it's become my responsible because it doesn't matter how good a friend, when they deal with the money, they can blame you. It's all your fault. You say so. You, you, you. Yeah. I'm not going to, you know, do, say anything on that. Sometimes, you know, if the escrow officer they know, I'd rather have an escrow officer talk to them. Not me as an agent, because I only deal with the real estate. Other than real estate, I mean, title, recording, insurance, capital gain tax, or anything. I don't deal with that. Or even they say, oh, uh, a foreigner, are, are we going to apply a tax ID? Yes, we need to apply for tax ID. But all I can tell you, go ahead, consult with someone you know. I can, otherwise, I refer to your CPA. You apply for the tax ID before you selling it. Yeah, just save you some time. Because applying the tax ID can be take two, three months easily. Okay, we'll I'll stop here. Then we'll continue. Paragraph 14, you love it, the contingency. <laughs> On next Tuesday. Yeah, because the contingency, that's, you know, you gotta have to know to play what do you notice between buyer and seller. Because I'm gonna kind of, you know, not only cover this part, I gotta tell you, you know, kind of mix uh, what the contingency form and notice buyer to perform. A lot of Lot of I can tell you that lots of seller, I mean lots of listing agent, they forgot. They only give the buyer. Here's a CR form, the contingency removal form. And why the buyer doesn't sign it back? I say, well, they don't have to. Why? Because you didn't give a notice buyer to perform. You're missing the form. You should give a notice buyer to perform and contingency removal form together. Not just the CR form. You gotta have to give it an MVP form too. And how many times can you give them? Well, as many as you want. When you want to want to contingency, after 10 days, you can, you know, if you wish, or you put on the counter offer. So some, you know, the buyer uh, a listing agent they want to play smart. Hey, 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 you know, I want to, you know, have the uh, buyer remove the inspection contingency within 10 days. Then you better give the what? The MVP number one to remove the inspection contingency. Then you give it a CR form. Then when the appraisal coming 17 days, you give it a second MVP form, number two, and CR number two. When the 21 day and a long contingency, that means you remove all contingency. But is it all, can it be happen? Sometimes if you're missing HOA document, oh, too bad. Then I have to leave HOA outside of a all contingency form. That's become IBP number three, CR number three. Then when it's at the end, number four. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So I never push the listing agent, but you have to push your lender to give the uh, the condo certificate as soon as possible because that's not part of a contingency. That's a buyer's. Okay, buyer, you need to, because you're long. That's part of a contingency within the long contingency. Twenty-one days. You better complete it you know, with a condo certificate, make sure they can finance. Because remember what I tell you, what's a five items category? It will, you know, stop funding. One, owner, renter, occupy ratio. Two, 
What else? Reserve. Usually it has to be 10% of a total income, total collection income, you know, from the HOA, at least 10% of a reserve in the bank. What? Huh? Delinquency. How many homeowner pay monthly delinquency? And? Master insurance. They say if they master insurance, they have enough coverage. Usually that, that part, it, enough. I never see uh, anything, you know, I mean, you know, last insure, but, and what else? Lawsuit, litigation. If the uh, homeowner association, they got litigation, lender may not fund the loan because they are afraid. If the litigation, who knows, gonna be compensated to particular unit or unit, okay? And could be come out from reserve. Then your reserve is not enough, suddenly. So those, those, those five categories can be a killer, you know, for the finance. So that's why when you deal with the townhouse homeowner association as a listing agent, you check on everything right away. You can provide the information to the buyer's agent if you wish. For example, some of the community, community and I already know, and I will put on the agent remark, this property can only accept cash offer. It's not seller wanted to accept cash offer. It's just because over 70% are rental. It's no way you can finance unless you get a private lender. So that's why I tell them, I say, over 70% are renters. Then prefer cash deal. <laughs> yeah, because you, I don't think you can get financing. Or um, if it's over 50%, then I could, uh, renter, renter ratio is over 50%, then no investor finance. Because investor, they cannot finance. They can only occupy, they can get finance. Investor, you have to pay cash. So those are I will disclose. Or if you already have a litigation, I deal with it before. I better have a paperwork from the attorney office and saying this uh, litigation is not gonna cost from, or it's not gonna be coming out from the reserve. So that means, where are they coming from? They must be have other insurance policy to cover the lawsuit. You know, some of uh, the uh, HOA do have those insurance, just like our ENO insurance <laughs> cover the lawsuit. So do HOA, they have it, not just a fire. Yeah. Or maybe they have umbrella insurance. So if you get an attorney letter, then, then I can get financing or funding. And who's responsible for that? Do you think it's buyers responsible? Uh, buyers agent sometimes is not have, um, doesn't really have a channel to get into, or you have to go know where or who to ask. And as an experienced listing agent, you helping the buyer with all the document, it's actually helping you to close the escrow, isn't it? So we, so you gotta remember, buyers agent, listing agent, we work together, not work against each other. You work together, we get paid. You work against each other, <laughs> nothing. You work for nothing. Yeah. So those are, you got to have to remember that, okay? You work together. Create a win-win situation. Sometimes you let the listing agent be the bad guy. Sometimes let the buyer's agent be the bad guy in front of a seller. Let the listing agent be the bad guy in front of a buyer. <laughs> Role play. Okay. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. No. But the uh, if nobody served me MVP, why should I have to? Why should I have to have the buyer volunteer sign a CR? I could wait. Unless you know, I can tell the buyer, say, "Well, are you ready? You have to know." You sign a CR, you kiss your initial deposit, goodbye. You ready? Uh, especially the last one. 
all contingency. Okay? Or if appraisal contingency, did you sign appraisal contingency before even the appraisal report coming out? No way. But as a listing agent, when the time is up, they serve you the notice prior to perform for appraisal. Yeah, it's their job. Two days before 17 days, what? 15th day, they can serve you the uh, uh, appraisal contingency. Listing agent is only with the seller signature. Buyers, you know, they but they have to acknowledge. They have an initial need to sign to acknowledge. They receive the MVP, so that means they have two days. Then suddenly the uh, uh, cancellation right took it away from the buyer. Become seller can cancel the buyer. For example, you gotta have to thanks listing agent serve you the CR form. Why? So you can close the escrow if your buyer is serious. Don't keep on wait and wait and wait. So you push the buyer in the other way. So who's gonna be the bad guy? Listing agent. I'm a good guy. I'm with you, buyer. But thanks to seller, say, hey, look, thank you so much. You served me the CR, so I can push the buyer. Are you gonna ready? Ready? <laughs> yeah. So that that's why you know even some. Uh, when the time is up, uh, I hate to remind the seller the CR form, but sometimes if I need to, and I don't want to indirectly push my buyer, and I push the listing agent, they said, give me the CR form. <laughs> yeah, then you can have the right to push a buyer. Hey, seller serve us a CR form. You better make a decision. Yes or no. Because sometimes the buyer, they continue to look at some other property. You gotta have to make them to finalize it. Don't continue to look at more. I don't. I don't have time with you. You're tired. Okay, you're wasting my time. Well, I will understand. Probably the first week, you want to see some more. And hey, maybe we have some more houses better than this. Come on. Then what are you submit this offer for? Oh, so we can you know get into uh, something. And we continue looking. Well, believe me, a lot of a buyer will ask you, can we still continue looking when it's open escrow? Sure. I always say sure. But once it's really open escrow, not really. <laughs> I want you to close this one. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for coming. Okay. See you next Tuesday. Bye.